What's up guys, Erudite Tracking here, back with another video. We got a new load for you guys, something I haven't had in quite a while today. We have skitty coils. I don't want to talk too much, let's cut to the chase. Roll the intro.
skitty corals today and these skitty corals have eyes to the sky and i'll show you guys exactly what that means here we're actually already loaded and secured so i can show you guys what it looks like right now i wasn't able to really film while they were loading so let's go take a look at the finished product well semi-finished product we still got to get tarped here but i'll show you guys this guy here you see that row here it's a row of six coils now when i say skidded clearly they're on skids and eyes to the sky so the center of the coil right there that's the eye eyes to the sky so the eyes looking up eyes to the sky and you can have coils in two other ways here you can get shotgun style and suicide style and i'll wait till another video to explain those to you guys i prefer to do it when i actually have that load on the trailer that way i can go through explaining everything else but these are pretty simple to secure but they're a bit of a pain because i have to use so much equipment to secure them like i had to use like all of my chains i had to use all 10 chains that i had in the headache rack and all of my ratchet binders to do that and then some like i actually didn't have enough to do everything i had to use straps to secure one coil completely and i prefer not to do that i like to use the straps as like a finishing product over the top of the skids or over the top of the chains but you know you got to do what you got to do didn't have any more chains but it'll be sufficient so we'll check it out here you want to start with your a chains on these skidded coils on your very front one and on your rear so when i say the a chain we have one chain is going from the left to the right of the trailer and it's actually connecting there is a there there is and it's loud here <laughs> but got to film through it but there's a ratchet binder that's underneath here that's pulling the chain that's going from the left and the right it's pulling it tight and i took the access that's in the middle of those chains and it goes through up here and it wasn't i wasn't able to quite center it so i had to kind of like counterbalance it ideally you want this you want everything centered you see how the one in the rear is centered and the one is kind of like off a little bit but i have it tight super tight so it won't move but that right there is to keep this skid from coming forward that right there is your forward movement protection the a chain if you see like it shapes into like the letter of capital a so up top there's a of course there's no thing to the center but that's down to the bottom and then you counterbalance that by having the chain behind it going under and through that a chain pulling on the other side over there you see this ratchet binder pulling that tight and then that's holding the skid down top to bottom and then i put a strap over the top as extra securement right there and i just did that all well no i didn't do that all the way down i didn't do a chains all the way to front to back there's an a chain in the very front skid right here and in the very rear the one in the very back and that's doing the same thing keeping the skid from going backwards off the trailer which really for that to even happen you'd have to be reversing really quick really quickly and then go to a dead stop to risk that happening you wouldn't really come into contact with something like that most likely but every skid after the first one and before the last one just has x chains just one from left to right diagonally but all of the skids have that strap over top of the chains as well and of course you got to use your edge protector you don't want to damage the product metal edge protectors underneath the chains plastic edge protector underneath the strap if you don't use the edge protector under the strap there's a very high likelihood the vibration from you driving the truck could cut the strap and if you don't use edge protector underneath your metal then the vibration can mar dent scratch scuff whatever the metal there and you could have a damage claim you don't want that so like i said i just did that all the way down the trailer and this is the one right here where i ran out of chain so i wanted to try to make it even so i started from the outside i used all my chains on the first second one here and then the last three in the rear that's where all my chains went so i had to be stuck using just straps here to make that same formation minus the chains i prefer using metal when i'm using uh well, as far as i prefer to use chains when i'm securing metal and if i can't you know if i'm stuck using straps like uh some orders 
the customer doesn't want metal or they don't want chains on their products so you have to use straps but i always use edge protectors regardless of what i'm hauling if i'm hauling uh steel i always use edge protectors you know underneath it regardless just to keep from damaging the product and to keep from having my straps get cut so that's pretty much it it's easy but like i said it's it's a little bit labor in terms of having to drag out all the chains and use ratchet binders on all of them and it's even worse when you gotta unsecure everything take it all back down and put it all in the headache rack drag it from the front to the back it's it's a headache but it's what you got to do i'm not quite sure if like you could go well i'm supposed i guess you could maybe go through this whole load and use all straps there's probably some guys out there that do that but i'm just not comfortable doing that i prefer metal to metal in terms of securement if i have a choice you know and i just like i said just do that right there as a last resort because i didn't have any more chains left otherwise i would have used an x chain on that as well but that's it for the securement part of the load we got to strap it strapping's easy so we'll knock this out we'll be up on our way out of here looks like we are going to be going to fayetteville north carolina which is actually only going to be four hours from here you know so it's going to be a really short loaded or loaded <clears throat> excuse me it's really going to be a really short loaded travel here so we'll actually get there before nine o'clock we'll probably get there around sometime around six or seven so the sooner we get this tarp the sooner we'll get out of here so here we go now you see it now you don't <laughs> all right so we're all good to go we're all strapped up tarped up see we got our tent tarping going on again i actually enjoy doing that part of it for some reason i don't know why all right but before we go we got to do our semi pre trip check like i always like to do check and make sure the lights work and uh <clears throat> everything that's supposed to blink is blinking all our connections are good i always like to do that it's good practice to do it but also one thing that you want to do before you take off with any load and really you should be doing it before you start securing anything is uh once you get your bols i've already checked mine but uh once you get your bols you need to check and make sure that the delivery address that's on your bol and the bol number matches the information that you were given from your dispatcher all right you don't want to wait until after you secured everything you put your tarp on and you look at it and you see that your BOL does not match the information you were given. That's a problem. I've seen it happen to guys. I've seen guys load everything up. They're just about to leave and they realize that their BOL number is not correct and it's going to a whole nother state. Now they got to sit there and take everything off and get the customer to swap everything around or they can see if they're lucky, if that load that they've already got is still supposed to be with the carrier that they're driving for and then they can just get routed to that place for the load they've got instead maybe that'll help you but uh i've even seen cases as worse as bad as you know a guy picked up a load drove i don't know how many hundreds of miles away and realized like he was supposed to be going and i don't know the exact name of the city i don't recall it was like months and months ago when this happened but uh you know it was a guy i'm just gonna pick a random name you know say he was supposed to be going to like redding ohio and he went to like redding wyoming you know that's probably not a real state but i'm saying like it was a a city the same city but in a different state and he didn't check his bols he just remembered the city and he typed it in his gps and just started going just started going he didn't realize until he was hundreds of miles away that he messed up so now he's got to call his dispatcher and he's got to call his dispatcher and then he's got to get in contact or the dispatcher's got to get in contact with the customer service rep or the salesman or whoever it is is dealing with all that and it's all falling on that driver's shoulders that he didn't do what he was supposed to do and it's easy to prevent as it is you know just read your paperwork read it as soon as you get it read it before you start securing anything that way if there's been a mistake made you can address it before you've gone too far lost out on any time and for darn sure before you start driving to a whole nother state you're not even supposed to be in you know you can't really explain that as a way as a driver you know that's going to just make you look really bad it's going to make you look like you're not a thorough worker you know it's going to make you look incompetent and 
I don't know, it might take a little while to live that down, you know, the shame of that. So don't do that, it's, it's easy to prevent. Read your paperwork, read it early, pay attention to it, don't get caught up in the day-to-day -day motions, it's just another load because, you know, it can easily happen if you're not careful. But aside from that, let's go ahead and uh, do this little semi-pre-chip check and then we're gonna get running. All right, guys, like I always say, you wanna start from the front doing this pre-trip check here, the one before you drive, not the original pre-trip that you do in the morning before you start working, but just a, a little quick pre-trip before you start driving for the day. I do this before I leave, after I picked up a new load, and after I've just gotten empty before I start driving both ways. So as you can see up front, Low beams, blinkers are working, passenger and driver side. See our side marker lights blinking like they're supposed to. All the side marker lights are on. Same thing with the trailer. This is a Benson, so like they're kind of covered. They're not as great, but there you go. Driver side, turn signal. Trailer tail lights all on, blinking like they're supposed to. And the same thing with the passenger side, everything is on already. So we're good to go. We've got uh, eight and a half hours available on our clock, and it's only going to take us like three hours and 45 minutes to get to the consignee. So easy drive. It's still going to be early, probably going to be around 7.30 or 8.30. I think I'll get there, but uh, let's get it done.
We're unloaded. Haven't put in my empty yet. I still got a bunch of stuff I gotta clean up. Uh, as you can see, look at this mess. I was telling you guys yesterday that uh, it's a pain doing these skiddy coils, you know, taking all the equipment out and putting everything back. Now look at all I got here. Steel tarp, padded tarp, padded tarp, bungees, dunnage, all 10 of my chains, all 10 chain binders, plastic edge protectors. I got stuff all over the place. On both sides of the trailer, I gotta clean all this up, put it in the headache rack. Like I said, it's a pain. It's gotta be done though. The sooner we get done with this, the sooner that we can go ahead and put in our empty and be on our way to our next pickup. <clears throat> Let's go. If you're flat bedding, you use the straps, you gotta get yourself an electric strap wander like this. I'm thinking about doing a video about the most important equipment that you can have as a flat better specialty equipment that'll make your job a little bit easier and a lot faster i know this stuff sure saves me a lot of time i think i will do a video like that be looking out for that coming soon Forty-seven degrees out here, <clears throat> but I was out here sweating as if it was like 75 when I was taking out all that securement. You know, doing this stuff, you know, physical activity, or doing flatbed work, it'll warm you up. And the one thing you don't want to do when it's supposed to be cold outside, you don't want to be out here sweating. You know, I originally had my sweatshirt on when I was doing this, but I had to take that mess off. Now, my shirt's a little bit wet, but I feel cool. I don't feel cold. I feel slightly cool, so I'm still comfortable. But, uh, I think I'll spare you guys rolling up the rest of these straps. I'll show you guys what's going on after everything's all said and done. guys i cleaned everything up that took a lot more time than i wanted it to like i said it was a pain every last bit of that was but uh got it done i got here last night at about 9 15 and uh they have a really large lot here i mean you can uh see all this this is just kind of like their staging lot they got a whole bunch of their own trailers and everything plenty of space I actually ended up getting unloaded like around the back you know follow that path back there and uh got that taken care of no problem as you guys saw once i actually got everything taken care of there was a forklift operator that came around and was talking to me and he was like hey you know uh what time did you get here and i'm like i told him like last night around nine o'clock he's like oh you know what we could have unloaded you last night and i'm just like oh <laughs> I wish I had known that. I wish I had known that because I definitely would have rather had un gotten unloaded last night, spent all that time cleaning up my securement last night because I would have been like logged out. I would have been, I would have had everything. I would have had my unload logged and I would have gone into Sleeper Earth. That way I wouldn't have had to utilize that time today. And I would have been able to put in my empty. Well, my empty would have been put in last night. So I would have been the first guy on the load board and I would have been able to leave 
on my next dispatch much earlier than it is now. I mean, what time is it now? It's like 10, 15 now. I would have been able to leave a lot earlier. And when you start a lot earlier, in theory, your day should end a lot earlier. So I don't know how late I'm gonna be driving today. It really just depends on where my next load is picking up and where it's delivering to. But uh, I can't do anything about that. So I'm not gonna, you know, spend too much energy being annoyed by that. I'll look at it more as a positive. Sorry, the next time that I come to this place, if I ever do in the future, I know that they can over they can unload me overnight so i'll just keep that in mind and that's definitely the strategy that i'm going to utilize the next time that i come here i'm going to get unloaded whatever time i get here because um, i'm assuming this place is a 24 7 unload uh, so i'll definitely get unloaded the next or the that night and then be completely fresh and rested in the morning and ready to go early in the morning on my next dispatch you know that'll be great so nothing i could do uh I did everything I could to the best of my abilities on that one. You know, like I said, I didn't really lose out on anything. It's just a little bit later of a start from my day today. So that's all good. Uh, I'm just going to hang out here, probably eat a little bit uh, while I'm waiting on my next dispatch. And then I'm going to go ahead and get out of here wherever that's going to be, guys. So I think we'll cut the video off there. And uh, here at I trucking out.